All right, so we have a heater from the factory, but since we're gonna be building here, we're gonna get rid of the heater. So, just gonna see what's under here. No idea. So this Good thing we checked YouTube University because these two lines are actually filled with coolant and not air. So if we took them off, they would spray coolant all over the van. So we need to turn off the coolant under the engine before we disconnect that. Very good to look at. So up in the front, these two are the only valves that I could find that go to the radiator to the engine. So I'm assuming, hopefully, that these two are the shutoffs for the flow out and back. Um, they're actually already off, so that's why our heater wasn't working in the first place. Um, I bet if we turned it on and then cranked it, it would probably work fine. But um, what we're going to do is leave all this the way it is and then go back there and hopefully uh, just shrink it down a little. This is the fuse panel, but this is the wire that went to the rear heater, which we no longer have. We just took it out. So I'm just going to label that it's gone. trying to remove the rear heater, but the front actually has a heater for the driver's feet as well. And what happens is that coolant from the radiator, from the engine, goes down one of these tubes to the heater and comes back the other tube. So in the buses, there are shutoff valves in the front, in the engine, where you can turn on and off this coolant flow. But if I want the front heaters to work and not just to spray coolant everywhere, then I have to close this loop so I can still go up to the front and then back to the engine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this extension portion and we're just gonna shrink it down so that the loop is a little bit smaller from the engine. Then the front should still work and we've removed the rear heater. So we shut off the coolant from the radiator which is flowing through here and we're gonna take it apart and hopefully not make a mess. Okay. Very stuck on there. Hmm. 
best friend, huh? That's very fun. <laughs> it's pretty stuck. <laughs> She's not moving. Oh boy. Be safe. Okay. That was cool. <laughs> mm. Oh god, oh god, oh So I should probably go get something to clean. What's happening? Just trying to get the last bit of this hose off. All right, so all we did was we wanted to close this loop up so we didn't spill any more coolant anywhere. Um, we just connected a hose um, and that's it. So instead of it going all the way down and back, long two hoses, we just have a short little loop. And that way we could theoretically run the front one still, even though the back one is gone. All right, lessons learned. What would we have done differently? First of all, I think that it's very important to shut the coolant off at the engine before you start doing any of this removal. Um, if we had sprung a leak, the coolant would have leaked out, that could have been very bad. So lesson, make sure you shut the coolant off at the engine first. The next thing I wish I would have known is that our tubes were gonna be so dry rotted that we were not gonna be able to pull them off. Um, I expected the tubes to be flexible and just be able to remove them. But that's not the case, so if you buy a bus from a dry state like Texas, expect them to just crack and break off. The next thing that we were not expecting is that I didn't realize that the fittings were going to be barbed, which made it really difficult to get off. That's why we had to break them off with a screwdriver. So FYI, the fittings are barbed and they're going to be even more difficult to get off, especially if they're dry rotted. Um, one important piece of info, the tube that we bought to replace our coolant hose, we found at an auto parts store like O'Reilly or Napa or something like that. We could not find it at Home Depot or Lowe's. So I would search first at an auto parts store to find a replacement hose if you're going to do that. And one other thing, I would definitely look for some kind of L bracket to reseal the connection of the hose without having to use a horseshoe type flexible tube. The hose sticks out pretty far into our build space and it looks like it's already starting to kink. So we're gonna have to figure something out there. Because I know that our hoses are so dry rotted, I don't even know if I'm ever gonna turn on the coolant. I'm afraid that it'll leak underneath all of our front dash area. Don't want that to happen. So we might just take the entire thing out and say we're not gonna use the heater. Those are our lessons learned. Let us know if you have any questions, comments in the chat below, and be sure to like this video and subscribe if you want more of this content.